Well, welcome back to Panorama of the Bible online. Uh, this is our final movement. We have come all the way, all the way full circle. We are reaching the, the end of the biblical narrative and what it's going to be saying about what is for us the future of the, this world. We might say the destiny of this world. And so uh, this is one of my favorite topics to get to talk about. And before we do so, it should, it should be expected at this point we're going to draw. We need to kind of catch up where we are in the story. And uh, hopefully you will be expecting some of what we're going to see in this particular movement. If you think about the biblical narrative up to this point, the story that we've been telling, it, it hopefully will be obvious what the destiny of humanity will be. The story as it unfolds by this point should be what you're anticipating. So if you remember with us, uh, God has invited humanity into his presence and the desire was that humanity would take the blessing of Yahweh out into the surrounding cosmos. But what we saw as the biblical story has unfolded is that humanity became alienated from God, alienated from each other, and alienated from this world, from the cosmos, because of this force, this power called sin. That's the beginning of the story of the Bible. That's the backdrop for the Bible. And what we might note as we draw this out is Humanity became enslaved to the power of sin. They were bringing blackness and death, sin, out into the world. And because of that, they are now, and I'm just going to represent this by drawing uh, like a line around them, they are now banished from sacred space. They're, they're kicked out of the garden. There are cherubim that are placed to say there's now, there's now alienation or there's hostility between God and and humanity. Because of the force of sin, the brokenness of sin, God is now going to have to, he's going to have to work to bring humans back into this place of blessing. And how does that story unfold? He selects one family, the family of Abraham, and says, through you I will restore both your, your ability to come into my presence and then also when you're in my presence, you'll take that blessing out. But what we saw is the family of Abraham fell victim to the very same power of sin. And we're anticipating our Messiah, the one who will come and defeat the power of sin. Why? Because when he defeats the power of sin, now humans are in back invited into the presence of God. And now when we are in the presence of God, we are restored to our job, our vocation of taking the blessing out into the world. And if you think about the the story as it will then take place in Revelation, what's gonna what we're gonna see on the last pages of our Bible is this. No longer is there any hostility between God and humanity. Instead, we have a new temple space, a new Jerusalem. And that new Jerusalem is supposed to be a temple. That new Jerusalem is now surrounded by those that have been redeemed. And those redeemed are taking the blessing of Yahweh out into the rest of the world. What we might say is the biblical narrative begins in a garden with humans invited to take the blessing of God out. But the story goes haywire in the power, in the brokenness of sin. And then the, the ending of the story. So think about the story. We begin in a garden but, and we end in a garden. Remember the tree of life is back in the book of Revelation. We end in a garden, but now it's a garden that's surrounded by a city. And that city is the, it's the people of the, this family of Abraham. It's the new Jerusalem. And now the blessing of Yahweh is going out into all of the rest of the world. Notice what the destiny of humanity and the destiny of the universe is not. The destiny is not we float away to heaven somewhere out there up in the clouds. No. We began with Yahweh dwelling with people and blessing the world. And we end with Yahweh dwelling with people and blessing the world. That's the biblical narrative. What, we're, it's, what has been broken is now restored in the beauty and power and presence of God. So with that in mind, go to the first pages of your panorama timeline. Let's take a look at where we're at in the story. We'll do a long summary at the end of this. But just notice we're on uh, the long timeline, that four-page timeline that's printed sideways in your panorama book. And if you look at our New Testament, we have the life of Christ. We have his birth 
obscurity, rising popularity, increasing opposition. Then we're going to have his Passion Week, which is the betrayal, arrest, and his trials, the crucifixion of Jesus, his, his resurrection and ascension. That moves us into the church age, which we noted in the church age, we have the Great Commission, so our mandate, to, the church is right now taking that blessing out. And in the new kingdom, that will be established. That's the thing that we're anticipating. But in the church age, we have uh, the Great Commission, then Pentecost, where the indwelling power of Yahweh comes to rest on this thing called the church, which is made up of Jew and Gentile. Then we have Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And we ended the church age uh, section. The book of Acts is really what we're outlining there with Paul in Rome in 60 to 62 AD. Now we move to what we're calling final consummation. Uh, to pull everything together. That's what consummation means. And it's just, this is the, the story of the Bible and where it's been headed. And notice what we're going to have. We have it printed for you right here. Here's the timeline. We have, we're currently in this thing called the church. That's what that box represents. We have the story of Israel unfolding and then how that will play out. Is the fulfillment of Israel's story will be its Messiah. And now he has created a new people called the church. And the, we have a dot, dot, dot with some question marks. That's where we are right now. Jesus is reigning as king over his people, the church. And already we're experiencing part of the new creation in this thing called the church. The old is gone, the new has come. That's where we live. But we are tasting, we might say as a down payment, that already, but there's a not yet that is yet happened, that is yet in the future. And that future will be when the power and the blessing of Yahweh permeates everything in the cosmos as it was intended to be with God ruling and reigning here on the earth. To get there, here's what we're going to see. We're going to have a tribute. We're going to have rapture, tribulation, and return. Now we're going to look at all these pieces. So we're going to have rapture, tribulation, and return. Then the thousand, the, the word thousand there, uh, you can put in your mind. We're going to call that the millennial kingdom. So rapture, tribulation, return, millennial kingdom, and then uh, new heavens and new earth. If you remember the great white throne, that's great. Uh, we'll look at that. But rapture, tribulation, return. Millennial kingdom, then we have new heavens, new earth, new creation. This is where the story of the Bible is headed. It's God dwelling with his people and bringing blessing to all of the world with Jesus ruling and reigning as king on the earth. That, by the way, is your destiny as, a, as somebody who's in Christ. Your destiny is not to float out into the sky on a cloud playing bizarre instruments in an eternal long worship service somewhere out there. Your destiny is eternity here in a recreated earth. And that's a, we're tasting that now in this thing called the church. So that's where we're headed. And now let's dive in.